another week and another time for us. Yay. Yeah, we're here. The approach here we shot. Be. on time, arrival, just as it was predicted to be. Here we, we predicted are. that we'd be on time. We're Who always did on that? time. <laughs> hey, it's 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 a character flaw, you know. On time is late, 10 minutes early is on time. The Vince Lombardi time, yes, sir. I'm John Ashton. He is Neil Michaels. That's uh, true. He, he's not driving to the Ranger. He's he's not a driving Ranger. He's not a a, a driving range kind of guy. See, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yes. If you're listening just on the podcast, yes. you have no idea what John's talking about. So once None again, whatsoever. I always, <laughs> for YouTube, I always put a name with a silly nickname at the bottom of the screen. So I put driving ranger because I was supposed to go to the driving range today mm -hmm. and I felt really good about myself. And I was talking to my son yesterday about some voiceover work that he's doing and somehow power ranger came up because um, he <laughs> knows somebody who was one of the voices of the original power rangers. Mm -hmm. And so I thought today I would be a driving ranger. Gotcha. So that's how that all came. He, about. he can't like introduce me to the, to the original pink power ranger, Kenny. I think she would probably be a little young for you. I mean, he could introduce you. I mean, you, that was a long time ago, man. Oh, that's true. She's probably in her 40s or 50s now. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. You know. Oh, no, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that did go from no, he shouldn't to no, he can't. So that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it worked well. Another thing we can't do is we can't talk about today's, this today. I mean, if you're listening to this on Sunday, the day it drops, then this is apropos. If not, then it's old and forget about it. So just That's skip ahead. Sunday, but, February the 13th, 2022 is what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. The, the day of the big game. The, the day when the Cincinnati Bengals will uh, will will reemerge as a victorious power over in the, the NFL. Trend. I don't know he, if they're going to win or not, but at least it'll be a power. You think <laughs> you, you think that the Bengals are going to win? Do I think the Bengals are going to win? No, yeah. I'm hoping the Bengals are going ah. to win. I'm thinking that I, I don't, I, I don't think they will. I was thinking that the Bengals might bowl over the Rams and that it would be super if they did. <laughs> oh. But you know yeah. we can't use the official NFL terminology. So no, but but you can use those words in reverse order. Well, because they're course, English they're just, words. They're just English words. You, you exactly. can't have a copyright on words. No. Yeah, that that too would not be super. No. No. So. <sighs> <laughs> Wait, ring. Hello, hello, NFL. <laughs> Call John Ashton. His number is. <laughs> it has been so funny, though, listening to all the people who, who work at, at media outlets that do not have rights. Yeah. For, and they're talking about it because everybody's talking about it, but they're talking about it surreptitiously. Using all those stupid things that we've all had to learn over the years. Yeah. The, big the big game, game. Sunday's game. The, yeah. cha NF the, the football championship. You can't yeah. even say NFL. Yeah, I mean, come on, people. Right. You know, and, and uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything. There's just large sports organizations whose it just seems that their their number one thing is not to entertain. It's not to uh, preach the gospel of sport and how well sport does to build character and help people. It's right. how much money can they make? Yes. So um, part right. of the reason I'm, and and you know, we don't cuss on this show. But I am super pissed off today that the NFL just got more members of the NFL Hall of Fame. And those that came in, and I don't have the names in front of me, were very deserving. And, and congratulations to the new members of the Hall of Fame. Richmond Webb was once again not one of them. Yes. And, We've got and to fix are that. you effing kidding me? <laughs> I mean, I did see the names of some of the people. And some of the people are quite deserving and some of the people are deserving, mm -hmm. but certainly not more deserving than our friend Richmond. And so I'm, uh, you know what? Not super and not bowled over yeah. is what I'm saying. We need to fix this. We need yeah. to fix this. Yeah. Hey, we've got something for you today. It's not a football player. No. You'd think maybe super uh, uh, Big big game Sunday. Yeah. Whoops. I almost slipped. Big game Sunday, we'd have a, a big NFL star. No. Nah. No, nah, we figured no. 
Everybody else does that. We zig, That's you right. zag. We're going to be different. So we've got an actor. And a big name. And Good he guy. was super when he was acting. Yes, indeed. He yeah. will bowl you over many times. <laughs> and um, and, See, and as, for the third time, <laughs> as, as my daughter once said, she said, Daddy, could you please tell him your 30 something daughter says thanks for the childhood? That's that's pretty sweet. That's yeah. that's really, really cool. Because you were going to recognize this dude from well, Dawson's Creek. One Tree Hill. One Tree Hill. I mean, those were those were not necessarily teen, the news. Teen Saturday TV shows, Night Live. Yeah. Jeez, he, I mean, I, this is my arm. Yep. And you could probably go all the way up this arm and all the way down that arm with all of the credits that Mitch Lawrence has. And Indeed. now he can add to that incredible list of great credits that he's on the approach shot. He's finally made it. He has. Yep. Months <laughs> after his brother. 40 never, years in ever. Hollywood and he finally made it. <laughs> 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 and he will be here to celebrate that when we come right back. And we're coming right back. We are the approach shot. Hang out. Mitch Lawrence will be with us when we come on the other side of this short, very short break. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. You can hear us now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm afraid to hit the volume button, though. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. I, I can imagine just at this point, anything. Don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Let's see. Yay. Okay. All right. Speak to me, boys. Hello. <laughs> How are you? We're good. Where are you, geographically speaking? Uh, Myrtle Beach, South Ooh. Carolina. Uh, I, I thought that at... 843 looked familiar. Yeah. I yeah. So, so you guys years. are in... California and Louisville? Yeah, I'm just down the road from your brother. I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> so I played, is he. I played golf with him a couple times. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, yeah, it's good I, to see you guys. It's good to see your faces. That you yeah, that may be the first time anybody's ever said that to us. <laughs> To you, well, maybe. When, you, when you're just used to seeing words on a small phone screen, it's nice to see faces. Yeah, it's very true. You've, You've already know. seen my face, really. So this isn't a big deal. <laughs> yeah. We have seen your it, face. It came well, with I mean, a different you, person, but right. You talk to my brother, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. Are you guys <laughs> twins that and you're the oldest? I am identical and I'm four minutes old. There you go. I Which I was... reminded him about our entire life. <laughs> he, he knows. Yeah, he does. Well, John, let's get rolling on this. Yeah, let's I, get doing I it. I don't want to leave a lot of the good stuff on the uh, on the cutting room floor, as the case may be. Okay. Uh, let me just get to the thing. Here we go. This is uh, segment number two. We begin in three, two, one. And welcome back to The Approach Shot. I am John Ashton. He is Mike Krasny. Mitch Who? Lawrence. Who am I? No, you're not. You're Neil... I'm John Ashton. He's Neil Michaels. That is though, true. Even though he has someone else's name emblazoned across his screen. Thanks, Zoom. Now, this is, <laughs> we, we promised you a guest, and uh -huh. we have one. We dug one up. We went all the way to South Carolina and found Mitch Lawrence, who looks an awful lot like a guest we had about two months ago. I can't even think of who it is. <laughs> hey, Mitch, before you jump in, I, I have this gigantically long piece of paper that has every television show that you were on that I recognized, which was about a third of them because <laughs> you were in everything. But I have to tell you that the strangest thing is I'm looking at, at, at the IMDB and everything that you're in, most actors sort of get pigeonholed into a, I'm an action guy, I'm a romance guy, I'm a soap guy. Jeez, what didn't you do? The, the man's the, the longest runs were in things like SNL, which is where I think everybody knows you from. Not necessarily the news, which was one of the great shows of all time. Dawson's Creek for five years, Matlock for seven years. Um, one of my all-time favorite shows that I think was one of the most underrated shows on television, which was Prison Break. Um, mm -hmm. You also had the joy of being on Cop Rock. Sorry, <laughs> with my brother. <laughs> Matthew and I did Cop Rock together, and it was actually one of the great working experiences we had together. 
it was such a great concept yeah. and it was it was wasn't it Bochco? yes so you know he had nypd blue he had hill yeah. street blues he had all this great stuff going and then the show came out and everybody was like oh this is kind of a cool concept did yeah. maybe translate the way we would have liked <laughs> it didn't it didn't really work but i gotta tell you for those of us who were lucky enough to be on it and i know my brother would say the same thing by the way hi guys how are you I um, uh, um, uh, we both the same way. A, Stephen Bochco, uh, great cast. Um, and when you have a chance to do something like that, even if, if they don't quite pull it off, it's, it's completely worth it. I don't think either of us would have traded that experience for anything. And I really don't care if you didn't like it, man. <laughs> so you are like your brother. We see the other. Oh, we, we have this in common. <laughs> so there was, so there was, a, I mean, decades of being in front of all of us. And now you're doing golf. Um, you're doing, you're doing travel. You're doing podcasts. You're doing all of that. So, so you're going to have to walk us through how you go from directing Laverne and Shirley um, and being on Laverne and Shirley to, to being a golf podcaster. Okay, I have to admit, I did not direct Laverne and Shirley. Ah, the IMDb says direct on, maybe, maybe they meant that you were very no. direct while you were on there. <laughs> I, I, not only is a direct connection, but it's a great segue that you didn't even know you were making. Uh, well, I worked on Saturday Night Live for five years, the first five years of the show, on the production side. Um, I started off as Lauren Michaels' gopher, made $93 a week, lived in a one-room apartment above a Blimpies on Lexington Avenue, <laughs> Yum. Uh, and kind of worked my way from that to being a researcher and then an associate director. Uh, at the end, and then I produced the fifth year, 20 primetime best of Saturday night shows. Wow. Okay. So, but I had also started to do on camera stuff, extra work and under five line work during that time. And in 1980, at the end of the original run with the original cast, uh, I decided to move to LA and start acting, which I did. And the Laverne and Shirley connection, <laughs> Um, during that time of the five years, I had gotten to be really friendly with Penny Marshall, who was on the show a lot and around the show. Uh, spent a lot of time with Penny. And when I told her I was moving to L.A., she said, where are you staying? I said, I don't know. She said, I have a guest house. Why don't you come stay at the guest house? So I did. I moved into the back of her beautiful mansion in Encino and uh, started taking acting classes. And one day she came to me and she said, it's your birthday, isn't it? And I said, yeah. She said, I'm giving you a birthday present. I'm going to get you your SAG card. Wow. And she gave me a guest shot on Laverne and Shirley, which was the first part that I did. And without that, it could have taken, I could still be looking for my SAG card at that <laughs> right now. So, um, yeah, Penny was a really influential person in my life. And I just kept taking classes. And uh, the, the first big thing, that happened was not necessarily the news. Uh, nobody knew what it was. HBO, this shows you how old I am and how far back this goes. HBO had just started. ESPN mm -hmm. had just started. Um, nobody really had it. And HBO gave us a pilot, which we did. Uh, the show was based on an English show called Not the Nine O'Clock News. Uh, we did one pilot. We thought, okay, that was it, it was fun. Uh, great cast, really talented bunch of improv actors. Yes, it was. And then they came back and said, we wanna give you six shows, which they did. We did one every other month. After that, they came back and we were on, I was on the show for eight years. Uh, I left and it went on for another year or two, but uh, just in terms of continued experience, it was by far my favorite thing that I ever did. It was really great. And then I just kept going. Then I started getting other stuff, um, a lot of TV, mostly TV. I did a couple of movie things, but a lot of TV. And then I uh, decided in 1992, I wanted out of LA. So I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I had, by the time I left, I already had an agent in Charlotte and they were filming a lot of things in Charlotte at the time. Matlock had just moved there. 
I had done a couple of Matlocks in LA and knew the producer. He said, um, I know you're in Charlotte now. Do you want to come and do a recurring character on Matlock? I said, I said, uh, yeah, pretty sure I do. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> Paycheck thing. It's yeah, awesome. I'm, no fool. I'm no fool. So I did that and it, I really did a ton of TV movies. Um, when I was living in Charlotte and Myrtle Beach. I moved to Myrtle Beach in 99 because I was in the golf world. I had met a guy in Myrtle Beach playing and my brother and I both played in a lot of celebrity events around the country. And one of them, we, I used to play in the Greater Greensboro Open program all the time. And I was in Greensboro and they said, do you wanna go play in a tournament in Myrtle Beach? And I went, yeah, sure. <laughs> so there were about 10 of us and we, gotten some cars and we drove down to Myrtle Beach and uh, with some great people, Alex Trebek and Boom Boom Jeffrey on from the Rangers and mm -hmm. just a bunch of us. And the first night at the party in Myrtle Beach, I met a guy who was standing behind me and we started talking and three hours later, we said, let's keep in touch. And his name is Paul Himmelsback. He lives here in Myrtle Beach. He owns four golf courses here at the beach. And I kept in touch with him for years. And when I moved to Charlotte, he said, I want to start a channel in Myrtle Beach that runs in the hotels 24 seven. Do you want to host it? Do you want to host the show? And I went, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, no fool. I'm good at answering questions. <laughs> and uh, so I started coming down and we shot pretty much every golf course in Myrtle Beach. And uh, after a while, my wife and I, my wife, Ava, who's a hall of fame, billiards player. Um, we were traveling a lot and we could live anywhere. And I said, why don't we take Nikki, my stepdaughter and her horse and let's move to Myrtle Beach. We can live there. So we your did. wife, the striking Viking. Correct. She mm. is uh, she is in the, the billiards hall of fame. How is that how you got into the billiards world or did you meet in the billiards world? Uh, no, I suck at billiards. <laughs> I suck. I suck then, and I suck now. <laughs> um, I was this again is golf. I mean, golf. I know my brother feels kind of the same way too. But golf has pretty much given everything, other than my longtime friends who I've known. Um, golf has given me every great thing in my life. And I was living in LA and single and playing in about twenty-five celebrity events around the country. And I knew a guy who was running a tournament in Winston-Salem in North Carolina, which was essentially the senior tour championship. Uh, it was played at a place called Tanglewood. And he invited me to come play and I got on a plane and came. And that night, the, the pro-am night, there were two days and in the night time, they had a charity raising, uh, money raising event for charity. And I walked in and I'm, like I said, I'm single and just kind of looking around. And my friend George came up to me and I said, what's going on, man? And he goes, I think you should go in the back. Is it the convention center? And they had Vegas night. It was roulette wheels and, you know, poker tables. He said, I think you should go all the way in the back and play pool. And I said, <laughs> I don't play pool, George. He goes, no, I think you should play pool. And I said, George, if you had no arms, you could beat me at pool. I don't play pool. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this out. I hope your audience will forgive me. George looked right at me and he went, asshole, go play pool. <laughs> and so I took that as a sign that possibly I should do that. And I went back and there were two tables. Uh, I looked at one and there was a, a guy who's now a friend, Mick Varner, who's also a Hall of Fame player, little, short little guy with wiry hair, lives in Tennessee. And I looked over there and I saw him playing pool and I went, okay. And then I turned to the other table and my now wife was on the far side looking toward me. She was down over a shop. She had big curly hair and the most beautiful green eyes you've ever seen gets to me still. And she looked up like this. And the first thing that came to me was the great Mel Brooks line when he was the 2000 year old man and he said, hey, there's ladies here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I went over and I spent about, I don't know, $150 for charity. And we talked for a long time and it took a couple of years. She lived in Michigan. And then uh, after we had gotten together uh, and moved to Charlotte, 
that was 92. Uh, in 94, we got married. And right after that, uh, we were in Chicago. She was playing an event. And um, I was there with her and the, we had friends. She was the president of the Billiard Association. We had uh, friends who were on the board and all of a sudden the ESPN guy, we still don't know why other than, and I swear I was nowhere near the guy. I'm telling you, I was nowhere near him. <laughs> were but you he, near him? He didn't show up. <laughs> I'm not saying he wasn't walking by to my building and a statue fell on his head. I'm not saying that. You're not. But he didn't show up. <laughs> he didn't show up. And uh, this other friend of ours on the board said, why don't you do it? And I said, well, I don't know anything about pool. And I've never been a sportscaster. And she looked at me and she said, you're an actor, right? I said, <laughs> yeah. yeah. She said, then act like a sportscaster. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow they let me do it. Uh, we did the first probably five events in post-production. All I had to do was the on-camera stuff. And like, somehow I got through it. I have no idea how and wound up doing the commentary, a lot of it with my wife for almost 20 years on ESPN. Very uh, nice. This yeah. is the approach shot. We have a guest, Mitch Lawrence, who is as, as uh, a self-described man who just can't say no. I guess. Uh, and, and we have some more, some more stories, some more questions, uh, but we're going to take a quick break and be right back. This is the Approach Shot Hangout. All right, number 30 in three, two, one. And thanks for coming back. This is the Approach Shot. I'm John Ashton. Neil Michaels is here along with Mitch Lawrence, our guest, who looks like we said an awful lot like a guest we had a couple of months ago. Yeah. There's, there's this, and, the, this, and, and that guest from a couple of months ago would tell you that he's the more talented of the two Lawrences. Yeah, so. <laughs> yes, he would. Yeah. And, and what would you say to that? I would say that uh, all credit to my parents. I think we both have a certain amount of talent. Uh, it often overlaps. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. He stays in his ring, I stay in mine. Um, so I'm gonna leave it to you guys to decide. <laughs> well, Actually, I don't want to start any more family squabbles, pal. I, I, this is... well, we don't want to start well, any family squabbles. Either. Yeah, we kind of do. You know, I'm the kind of guy, yeah, I'm the kind of the guy that stirs the stick. So maybe yeah, there's somebody, is, there, is there somebody else with us today that might have a different opinion? Matthew, are you here? Yeah, I'm oh, here. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah. I thought I gave a really good answer there. You yeah, did what a load of crap. <laughs> but, um, let me just say, um, your answer should have been because you're apparently the nicest guy in the world. Your answer should have been, he's definitely more talented than I am. I've learned a tremendous amount from him, even though I'm the older brother, I've learned so much from him and I'll be forever grateful. That should have been your answer. You have been scripted for next time, Mitch. Okay, I mean, can, I, can I amend my answer right now? <laughs> yeah, sure. One second, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, single mall makes me say what you said, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just have to, I, I do, all kidding around kind of uh you know he's the best person i know and oh. i've always said that and no shut up for a minute will you please <laughs> god he just never stops talking he's the best person i know and um you know what he's made of his life of course a lot of it has to do with my sister-in-law ava and that goes without saying i mean now that I think of it, he really wouldn't be that great without Ava. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, hey. you know, we, as he said, credit to our parents, because for a set of twins to do what we've been blessed to do in our lives, now that I think about it, the same thing that happened when I spoke with you both, uh, you know, Mitch, I was the first one that was on the approach shot. <laughs> You know, um, when I, when I, no comment. Yeah. When, when I was, 
with you guys. I kept thinking of things, you know, and I would tear up as I just saw my brother do when he mentioned seeing Ava the first time. Um, we've been incredibly blessed to do the things we've done in our lives, both of us, and that we're twins. And, you know, a lot of times twins, one will be successful, the other one won't. One will get to do things. The other. For us, when you look back at our lives, and believe me, we're so old, there's plenty of lives to look back at here. Um, it's amazing. It really is amazing. And that, you know, we've gone from, uh, we were alive when there were covered wagons. And <laughs> now, now we're sitting holding I'm holding a phone in my hand, speaking to South Carolina. And by the way, uh, you two guys, uh, Neil and John Mitchell, we are about to get 10 hours straight of ice here. Yeah. So uh, I hope you're all, you know, it's probably warm where you are, it's comfortable. Uh, I'm, I'm not jealous at all of what you It's only you guys 70 are. today here. Oh, bite me. <laughs> If, I mean, it, if, it, if it makes you feel any better here in San Diego, it's only 68, but I have the heat on. All right. It's been great talking to all of you guys. Uh, hey, is hey, this so I'm, I'm right yeah. down the road from you, man. I got, I got the same stuff going on. So. I know you do. Yeah. And you're, you and I are real men here. Yes, we These are. two but... clowns are. <laughs> uh, is this FCC regulated? Because I'm about to make a, a gesture here. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, okay, both of you. Okay. <laughs> nobody, nobody watches our stuff. They only listen. Yeah, okay. All you right. know, the interesting thing is you both give credit to your parents, but here's, here's what those of us on the outside see. Two really successful actors who have gotten into golf and now they're in their 70s. They've lost their mullet. One lives in Kentucky and one lives in South Carolina. What the hell happened? They, they pass away and the two of you don't know what the hell to do with your lives? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Who says we don't know what to do with our life? <laughs> Tell them, Mitch. Tell them. What the hell, man? <laughs> oh, God, I got, the, I got the wrath of the twins now. Mike <laughs> Neal. Oh, I'm going to call Mike know, Neal from now on. I want you to know I don't even know this guy, okay? I don't know this guy. When we're done, Neil, just go back and listen to what you just said. Yeah. And, uh, I'm just telling you now, the next time you try to get in touch with me, yeah. <laughs> For both Mitchell and I, click. Okay, that's the sound you'll hear. Okay. Hey, I'm going to change the subject. You haven't lost any of your vindictiveness, Matt. As you've no. gotten older, I'd no. like to change the subject 180 degrees if I could. Go. How long would it take to play 18 holes at every golf course in Myrtle Beach? Uh, I don't have a definitive answer, but we're down to about 80. So I really? would say five hours times 80, you know, do the math. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's got to be the highest per capita golf course town in the world. Well, there's, they call it the seaside golf capital of the world. And there's a reason. Yeah. Uh, we have, we're lucky enough to have the um, world amateur handicap championship here every year at the end of the summer. And it's literally the only place you could do it. This yeah. past summer in August, we had 3,500 golfers playing on 60 golf courses over, over three days. Hmm. And you couldn't do it anywhere else. No. So um, I think that's that, a pretty good spot if you like golf. Is yeah. that Myrtle Beach or is that include North Myrtle Beach? Because yeah. my in-laws used to live in Calabash and yeah. we used to go all the time. And it's fantastic. It is. Well, that's a, it. Actually, the Grand Strand is. I mean, the it's consider it's sixty miles long. Yeah. So it really goes from, you know, north of Calabash, uh, about half an hour, forty five minutes, all the way down to uh, Pauly's and in that area on the south end. So it's yeah. a wide area, but you know, eighty courses in sixty miles still isn't bad. Not yeah. at I was. Fact. We were just in Pauly's about four months ago, and. To, uh, to Matthew's point, had I called at that point, I'm sure I would have gotten a click, but- uh, Well, from him, not from me. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> oh, it's, it is it's a beautiful place. And I'm so glad that, that um, you've really 
gotten not only involved in golf, but between the Talking Golf Getaways and Golf Trip X, you're, you've got golf on all sides. And in fact, for those who are just listening, um, behind you, you've got some spectacular golf shots. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty lucky up here in the home office. I, um, the, the Talking Golf Getaways, is that's been unbelievable. We just finished our 180th episode. Mm. Uh, Darren Bunch, my co-host and I, and our producer, Chris McEwen, and we had a blast. Um, we, we've gotten to do a ton of great trips together. Uh, we travel, we, we, the podcast reflect a really, really wide range of people in the game, architects, players, just people who are crazy about golf, authors, you know, uh, it's, it's been, it's been an unbelievable journey for me on the travel end. I had done two podcasts before that. Uh, one of them called Hooked on Hickories was the first one I did nine years ago. Uh, and that was all about the history of the game. I'm a hickory player. Uh, and that was about the history of the game. And that was unbelievable. And then I did Golf Connections. Um, and that was another run of three or four years where I had some amazing guests. Jeez. And isn't, in yeah. fact, your nickname Mick Hickory? It is. My, <laughs> my esteemed colleague, Darren Bunch, gave me that name. Among Hold other it. names. That's Hold not it. the only name. Trust me. Hold it. Wait a minute. You have a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Uh, you remember, uh, the, remember the episode you did, Matt? Um, I just hit the delete button. Watch this. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Here's what I'd say. You just said you did 180 episodes and I've done one? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yes, because you were so brilliant that there was no uh, way you could talk okay. the one that you did. All right. All right. You know what, guys? Thank you for having me. Thank you for letting us surprise Mitch. This is his show because yes. apparently he's the most important person in the golf world. Well, now. Certainly in your family. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely in my family. Definitely. <laughs> Although, Mitch, have you told him about my award? Anyway, uh, <laughs> I love you guys. I'm going to go spread rock salt now. So, you know, it's my nine iron, okay? Hey, uh, Matt, we're about to hit him with the uh, with a six pack. Do you have any uh, advice for him? Oh, geez. Yeah, good luck, Mitch. Have fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love you, Matt. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Guys, brother. Thanks for coming on, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Appreciate it. Matthew Lawrence and Mitch Lawrence is a four four minute younger brother. That's right. And then uh, we we have uh, threatened you with that six pack, and now we need to deliver it. Uh, okay. We'll take a quick break. We will be right back. This is the approach shot. Hang out with us. All righty. Now. Uh, hey, Mitch. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> We have been planning that, and the fact that we had to rearrange this thing three or four times made it such a pain in the ass, but he, wow. was, he was a good sport about tagging along. Well, that's all right, because he's a pain in the ass, so <laughs> you see how that works? They did, they did a lot of Dawson's Creek in Wilmington, didn't they, Mitch? Yeah, that's where they did it. So. Yeah. yeah, that's what I found. My, yeah, daughter, was, my daughter was a big fan. She used to... Oh, you have no... I, yeah. I mean, it's a joke. Between, between people in the South watching Matlock, which yeah yeah I get all the time, and then now a whole new bunch of people who are Dawson's Creek fanatics. Yeah, um, yeah. it was just lucky, especially Dawson's Creek. Nobody knew that first year if it was even going to be picked up, and it became such a cult favorite. It was, yeah. yeah, my six and they were great, brother. They were all great. They yeah, were kids. Right, we but they were really really good people. And fun. Here we go with the six pack in three, two. Thanks for hanging. This is The Approach Shot. I'm John Ashton. He is Neil Michaels. Mitch Lawrence, we kicked his brother out. Mitch is here back solo with us again as our guest. And he is about to uh, take his place on the hot seat and get six pack. All right, Mitch, here's the way it works. We, we fire off six questions to you. We want you to give us the very first thought that comes to mind. No thinking about it. No hemming and hawing. If you feel like you're uh, taking too long, you'll hear this. That means that you've taken too long and we'll move on to the next question. No, we won't. We'll just embarrass you. <laughs> Ready to go? I am as much All as right, I love here, 
Here we go. Question number one, the approach shot genie has come out of his bottle and is granting you a golf wish. You get to create a foursome from anyone in either golf history or in your world. Who's joining you in that foursome? Uh, my wife, my brother, and old Tom. Mm. Old Is that Tom quick Morris. enough? Is that quick enough? That was quick. That exactly. was very yep. impressive. John, you and I weren't mentioned, so don't don't be. That. <laughs> well, you said the first thing that came to my mind. That's right, first <laughs> thing. So there you go. <laughs> he could be coerced. You guys were in the next four for my swear. <laughs> I swear you're in the next four. <laughs> I have to be careful too when I say first thing that comes to mind. I'm waiting for somebody to say bacon or something. <laughs> well, I, I actually was gonna. Well, never mind. <laughs> PG show, man. Let's keep it PG. I know. I, that's why I pulled back. I'm from there New York. It could have been really bad. That's right. <laughs> Question two, Mitch. What's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you on the golf course? Um, embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Well, I said we played in a lot of celebrity charity events. There was the usual duck hooks and slices, um, trunk shots, top shots. There were also some great shots, but can I alter the word embarrassing? Oh, sure. Because I have a great Payne Stewart story, if you want to hear it. Uh, of course we do. I was playing in the Greater Greensboro. I said uh, Payne was my part. We played together a few times. We got to the 18th green. And I had a putt that was about 10 feet up the hill. He knelt down behind me as we were reading the putt. You said this is PG, so I'll, this will, this will <laughs> PG just 13. be. Um, as we were reading the putt, and he knelt down behind me. And I don't even know if I could say this because it's PG. That's oh, go okay. Ahead. Go ahead. He right. said, literally, he stuck his head in my ear and I said, how much do you think it breaks? And he looked at me and he goes, left to right. Okay, I'm going to do it. Left to right, the length of your dick. <laughs> <laughs> so I, of course, stood up and hit it five feet left of the hole. <laughs> Just to make a point. <laughs> so, Everybody watching that particular putt thought it was the worst putt they had ever seen, whereas Payne and my kicks and I were beyond ourselves. Now. You're so, right. That, that was better than embarrassing. That was okay. I, I just, right. I well to... done. <laughs> All right. Question three. Yep. Which would you get your heart racing more? Being told again you were hired on Saturday Night Live winning money for a contestant on Pyramid, which you appeared on regularly, or getting a hole in one? Wow. That's a great question. That's a great question because that's, that's all my of, one for the year. All of them feel great. Mm -hmm. All of them, all three of them, obviously. Uh, Pyramid was, when you did win money for somebody at the big board, it was off the charts, great, mm -hmm. exciting. Uh, hole in one. I've had two. I just had one at Rams Hill using a hickory. Congratulations. About a month ago. Um, Saturday Night Live. Uh, at the time, I didn't know what getting that job meant. The show was just starting. You know, nobody knew. It was like they closed the studio and let the kids run the show. Hmm. Um, but I would say, I would say it would be winning money for people. See, Despite all of the snarkiness and New Yorkness of the Lawrence boys, you guys have big hearts. I knew you would pick that one. They're going to kick us off in six minutes. We need to speak. Gotcha. Okay. Question four: Which actor that you worked with could have made a run at the PGA Tour? Um, I've been been able to play with a lot of friends who were really, really good golfers. Uh, I think probably friend wise. The best golfer among them was Craig T. Nelson. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. Craig was, Craig was a great golfer. Um, and when he was younger, I met him when he was older, but uh, when he was younger, apparently he could really play. He could still play. He was probably about a, I would say he's probably a five mm. in my LA years when we hung out all the time. We played a lot of golf together. And Craig T. was, he could play. Now, some other friends may hear me now. 
I'll be, <laughs> there you go. I'll be getting some calls, but you said off the top of my head, that's the right. name that came up. There you go. Now we know what the T stood for too. Yeah. Question five. Have you and Matthew ever impersonated each other like on a date or at an event? Yes, twice, actually. The two that I remember, the first one was in college when we actually switched dates mid-date. <laughs> <laughs> we changed clothes and switched dates mid-date. <laughs> and they didn't know. Um, that and the other time was not switching uh, dates, but I was doing a job on Santa Barbara, the soap opera, playing a lawyer in a murder trial, finished the time on the show, left, got a job on another show. They called and said, we have to reshoot a couple scenes. Uh, I said, sorry, I'm working. They said, it's okay, we'll hire another actor. And I said, well, if you're gonna hire another actor, I have an identical twin brother who's a pretty damn good actor <laughs> and the <suits> will fit. <laughs> But they did. So Matthew did uh, that part on Santa Barbara and they never said anything. And, you know, apparently you, nobody noticed. Did you get the credit? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> Very nice. No, I, he got the credit for the show. Nice. There you go. Question six. And we ask this of everybody who comes on the show. Since we are the approach shot, Mitch Lawrence, in your approach to life, what one rule do you live by? Um, hmm. I think it's the same one my brother said, uh, which is to be kind. I think it's, I think it's the most important thing we can do, especially now. I feel like if you do that and only that to people you know and people you don't know, which is a great thing to do, just surprise somebody you don't know by being kind to them, hold the door, um, do something nice for somebody that'll never see you again. I think it's the, I think it's the greatest way to live. Amen. Amen. Indeed. You are off the hot seat handled beautifully, sir. <laughs> well, thank you. That's fun. I was a little nervous about it. I gotta be honest. You know, you guys are the only ones that really hit you with that stuff. So, and we have enough time left was, for your basic shameless self-promotion. Mr. Lawrence, sir. Well, that's very kind of you. The uh, podcast is Talking Golf Getaways. You can find it at golftripx.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, uh, we have great friends all over. Randy, uh, Ryan Ballinger, Golf Newsnet, who's our partner. And there's some big news coming. Read that and Golf Newsnet, iHeartRadio. We've got some great stuff going on. So Talking Golf Getaways is the place. Fantastic. Beautiful. And Golf Trip X? GolfTripX.com is the website that uh, houses the Talking Golf Getaways podcast. Uh, it's not just the podcast. There's tons of great writing and, you know, travel and golf related information and articles by all different people. So GolfTripX.com is a good place to go. It really is. I, I spent some time on the website over the, this week as we were getting prepared. and There's some great stuff in there, including, by the way, I don't know if it was there or if I saw it on YouTube. If you are listening to this and you're a fan of Mitch Lawrence and who the hell isn't, <laughs> go find on YouTube the picture of you standing at St. Andrews in a kilt. It's fantastic. It's just <laughs> fantastic. I tried to get John and I to be able to post it here as we were doing it, but it's just, it's just a phenomenal picture and you just get caught in that one moment. I'll leave you with this. It is by far the most comfortable way to play golf. <laughs> and i am not kidding around i wear plus fours a lot because i'm a hickory guy mm -hmm. but doesn't even come close to wearing a kilt gotcha we we understand sir a little Mitch worried, Lawrence, we do appreciate you being with us great to meet you sir hopefully we can have you back again sans your brother that would be great <laughs> it would be my pleasure and an honor you guys are both great i really really enjoy what you do Fantastic. thanks so much Thank you, sir. Yeah, I was the sir. original morning guy at 95SX down in Charleston back in the early 80s, man. I miss South Carolina. I loved it down there. I loved it. It was great. Yeah, yeah. But I, I miss going and seeing my folks down there and, yeah. and just going out and playing golf and playing miniature golf in Myrtle Beach, miniature golf. Oh, my gosh, the courses they have. They're incredible. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. Guys, you guys know Brian Katrick? No. 
he was on the, you know, he does a lot of Golf Channel stuff. And yeah, Sirius know the and name, sure. Patrick and McGinnis. Brian is a huge miniature. He comes and plays in the Myrtle Beach Masters every year. Mm. And he's mm -hmm. serious. He does, he does a kid around. <laughs> I'll take my grandson, so I love it. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. 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 Well, we have we have effectively milked the entire 40 minutes, guys. We're about to get we got one minute to get kicked off here. So. Nice. Beautiful. Mitch, yeah. thanks again. Yeah, again to you guys. Hopefully we'll meet up in person. And obviously, if you get anywhere near Myrtle Beach, let me know. Love to have you. Definitely. We'll go out and see it up. Go play we'll some golf, it. man. All right. Definitely. All right. See you guys. Thanks, guys. I, I took the liberty of, first up, we're back. This is The Approach Shot. I'm John Ashton. He is Neil Michaels. Hope you enjoyed what uh, you have just heard. I took the liberty of playing this uh, kind of a sneak preview for a couple friends of mine. Oh, and did you? Uh, Yeah, I did. Just just said, what do you think about this? And and I, I, I want to read what the, the email I got back from one of the guys, okay? What do you do? He said, and I quote, <clears throat> excuse me, if I can find it. Do, 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 do. Yes, he said. He said, "What a great vibe this whole episode had." He said, "I even I and this guy is is you know he's he's one of those he listens to podcasts all the time and nothing ever phases him." He said, "Even I couldn't help but laugh during uh, <laughs> Matthew's cameo appearance." It was, <laughs> he said, "It was pretty awesome." <laughs> <laughs> so just just so that everybody knows. Because sometimes, you know, you hear all this stuff and, and you and you think, well, that was a setup. No. We had Matthew <laughs> on two months ago. Two months ago, yeah. And at the time he said, it's, you know, you ought to have my, my big brother on. And again, big brother by four minutes. Right. And I thought, wow, that sounds like a pretty cool idea. So John and I have been sitting there rubbing our hands like, you know, dastardly do right. <laughs> and we got, in, we got in touch with Matthew and we had to sort of, you know, massage the schedules and things like that. Yeah. And so Mitch had no clue that Matthew nope. was going to be on. And actually, if you're watching on YouTube, Matthew was actually on for about a minute, a minute and a half before Mitch even noticed. Yeah. And we had to point it out. Hey, there's somebody else here. So it was, it was, it was terrific. And, and yeah. Matthew was, uh, was, great to be on and it was a great chance for him to you know stick his brother a couple of times but yeah. as is a lawrence tradition he even said to us beforehand he said listen i only want to be on for a couple of minutes because this is mitch's show and i want him to shine so that was yeah. that was cool but you know he says that with all of the love in his heart but while he's there he doesn't have any problem ripping into shreds so <laughs> you know. it is a typical sibling relationship um, exactly it, it's, you know, love you to death, bro. But yeah, I respect. No, we're just going to tear you apart. That's, That's right. The way it goes. So much fun. So, so maybe we could find some more sets of twins we could get on. <laughs> Once again, I think we're approaching the line of inappropriate. So let's just pass that. <laughs> I know you've probably thought about having twins on. <laughs> and I got some stories about twins I could tell you. <laughs> I'm going to go and say, you mean baseball, the Minnesota twins. Well, those are the ones you're talking about, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's Yeah, that's, that's right. it, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, funny thing, we were you, you had said in, in the open here that, that you had an email from a guy. I got a text from my brother mm -hmm. talking about the Nick Lowry interview, and um, he's been a Kansas City Chiefs fan his whole life, and okay. he was just thrilled with the way you know, that the interview went with him and Nick was so great and so much beyond football that he had to talk about. Mm -hmm. And so he texts me and he says, yeah, I saw the interview with Nick and, you know, kept going into other things. And I, I said, well, 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 what do you mean you saw the interview? He said, yeah, I found it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I was like, my brother's older than I am. He's not technically savvy enough to download a podcast but he knows how to find us on YouTube. <laughs> what? <laughs> I do not understand what the words coming out of your mouth. <laughs> what is this YouTube of which you speak? <laughs> so that was that was just a cheesy way for me to be able to say, John, how do people find us on YouTube? Uh, ask your brother. <laughs> <laughs> No, we have we we have uh, weekendgolfguys.tube. There you and, go. Um, we have the weekend golf guy, some of the weekend golf guys uh, podcasts, because both both of these podcasts 
we record in, on video when we do it and the, yeah. the audio is is edited and put up the video is put up in its entirety yeah so you get to hear the stuff in between yeah you get to hear john and i screwing around ahead of time and yeah. telling stories that we probably ought not to have other yeah. people hear yeah and you get you get the maybe we shouldn't mention that stuff you know that that happens we 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 usually mention it first and then we go you know <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Maybe that's not appropriate. Come to we think would like to it. continue to have advertisers, <laughs> so maybe we just go yeah. ahead and edit that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is this stuff is unedited for one reason is because we think that you deserve to see exactly what the creative process is. Plus, we don't know how to video edit, so that's that was. <laughs> We can audio edit, but video, that's above our pay grade. Yeah, and we don't so much. <laughs> and, and we don't want to pay some 23-year-old to do it. So there you go. That's right. You get it in its entirety, whether you want it or not. <laughs> it is weekendgolfguys.tube. Beautiful. Um, and you can always get in contact. I mean, we're we're on Twitter, right? We is are on the, Twitter at the it, approach shot. At the approach shot. The okay. approach shot. Just to confuse you, that one is at the approach shot. Mm -hmm. But of course, our our um website is approachshot.net, approach shot. Net. know the, and please don't tweet, where's your the, which yeah. I have gotten several <laughs> times, and I don't know where my the went. I got you the right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think when I was 45, my the went out the front door. So. <laughs> and face, we have a Facebook page too, don't we? We do have a Facebook page, that Facebook page, or either one of those things. And mm -hmm. I think that one is the, I don't know what the hell it is. It just <laughs> Let's go to Facebook and ask go for to the Facebook, approach shot. Go to the search button, <laughs> button and put in the approach shot. And if you can't find it that way, there's plenty of other ways. Stop wasting your time. Yeah. And then when you do find it, please make a note of it and tell Neil what it is. Okay. Let us know. <laughs> Tweet it to us at the approach shot because that one I know. <laughs> Oh, so this week, very interesting. I, I always do this. I, I, I have too much time on my hands, apparently. I, I go back and see what episodes are popular that week, the past mm -hmm. week, because okay. there's always one that surprises me. For about three or four weeks at the beginning of this year, everybody seemed to be going back to episode number one and listening to the Joey Greco episode. This week, apparently the Nick Lowry episode, very, very popular. Mm -hmm. And the Jeff Garcia episode, which was six months ago, six now? months ago. Yeah. And I think that might be because of the game this weekend, but mm -hmm. um, those two popped up as, as just strangely popular. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this coming week, we're going to get a lot of the Matthew Lawrence episode. Yeah. Just because. Yeah. Yeah. So because when, when their sense of humor, both of them are hilarious people, hilarious. but their senses of humor diametrically opposed to each other <laughs> one one is much much more subtle <laughs> yes one is more subtle and one is hit you over the head with a baseball bat exactly so, yeah exactly hey, uh I, for the game today are you going anywhere doing anything uh <clears throat> i went it's going to be cool here we had one warm day it was it was last friday okay. and and i played golf of course you did um because I had to, you know, it was anytime it hits over 50 degrees, yeah. I'm going to be out there. Um, I, I made it through nine holes and then I said, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This, this is a stupid game to play when it's 50 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is the older we get, the, the higher that number goes. It used to be 50 degrees. And now you get into the point where maybe 55 is yeah, going to be the yeah. number. 55 and no wind. Yeah, there you go. And no wind. Yeah. Which which when you think about it though, I mean, that is that is again diametrically opposed to the way it was originally set up. Because I mean, this 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 game was invented in Scotland and it's always cold, it's always windy. Yeah. So if you want to experience if you want to experience real golf, you have to play in in uncomfortable conditions, cold and and windy. Maybe throw some rain in just for good measure. And then as you're doing that and you say, yes, I'm playing golf the way it was meant to be played, you realize that you're playing a game that was invented by the same people who invented bagpipes and called it music. So take it with however many grains of salt you want. That okay? was so smooth. 
Thank you. That was that was <laughs> bourbon smooth right there, my friend. <laughs> I did not know. I didn't see Top that shelf. you were going into that. that <laughs> Top that shelf. <laughs> Well, and I will, I will, uh, I, I see your smoothness and I, and I will try to top it by saying life is like that bottle of peanut butter whiskey I just bought. <laughs> I'm going to go open it. <laughs> yum, yum, eat them up. <laughs>